So 3.2 quiz answers. One is the word collinear. Uh, next time when we do a quiz, you'll need to spell that right. So C-O-L-L-I-N-E-A-R is the spelling of that one. Uh, today spelling doesn't matter, just collinear, good enough for me. The other main word of the day is coplanar. Uh, coplanar is another one tomorrow, we'll spell right. It also ends with an A-R, collinear, coplanar, and they both end with that A-R. Uh, so collinear, coplanar, one, two. Three, we go back to an old familiar word. Uh, the line postulate had made tests and quizzes before. Uh, for any two points, there's exactly one line that goes through both. So we're looking for two points, we're looking for one line, and if you have a sentence with those words in it, you're probably fine. Uh, I don't think I've said this before, but I'll, I'll try to remember maybe to say it again. You're, very few things are you going to have to memorize by their numbers. Uh, there will be very few things that I'll say, like, what's theorem 3-1 say? Uh, I'm not saying never, I'm saying rarely. Uh, reason being, if it's theorem 3-1 in our book, no other book is going to call it theorem 3-1. Uh, it's theorem 3-1 because it's in chapter 3, three and it's the first, first one. Okay? But, but someone else writes a book, it's not going to be called that. Uh, the postulates in other books, the line postulate might not be postulate 4. So I'm not going to ever ask you to memorize postulate 4 is the line postulate, that's worthless. Uh, but every book, if it's called the line postulate, it is that sentence. Uh, but it may or may not be postulate 4. So the numbers are not usually helpful in the titles, but the titles themselves are helpful. Uh, theorem 3.1 doesn't have a name. So that'll be a tip to you that in the long run, that is not going to be one of the superstar theorems. Most of the superstar theorems will have names, and you'd want to learn things by their names. Uh, but anyway, four, we're filling in the blank with one point. Five, I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, the titles of things are super important. So anything with a name, it's good to know the name. Uh, five's name is called the plain space postulate. So if they just had the word plain, that'd be worth a half. If they just had the word space, that would be worth a half. But to score the full point, you would need plain space. Uh, then for A, we're filling in the blank with a magic number. Uh, for lines, the magic number was two points. For planes, what's our magic number? Three points. For space, magic number? Four, four points is correct. So five, we're filling in with three. Uh, and then we're filling in with four in that order. And that's the new questions, and I'll explain a little more detail on that in just a second. Uh, eight is set of all points. So if they just said all points, I'd go half, because that's half of what I said. Uh, space is the set of all points. Nine is dotted. You can see that on my picture that I'll merge to in a minute on my board. I did some dotted stuff for the back part that's you're not going to be able to see it from the front. Ten, I'd go with cardboard personally, or some other sort of synonym of a thing that's like flat and skinny. Uh, I would take the blackboard for a day, I guess, if you wanted to say that, or paper, uh, but I'd rather say cardboard there. Uh, Eleven, pencils, pens, something like that would work as a synonym for a day, but you know, pencils would probably be our best analogy for those. Um, question on scoring something there? 10 was cardboard, 9 was dotted. Anybody else a score question? Let's get those back to the owners and I'll just keep talking and describe what's next up in the world of quiz here. Uh, the next read is going to be 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three is going to be postulate and theorem fill in the blank primarily. Um, we had a conversation the other day, about a week ago, and it'll be important tomorrow. If you'd say to me, how much of something do I have? And I said, I have one. Why is that a little bit deceptive? It may not be. It, it might be that I have one, but I might say, yeah, I have one. Um, but that, what might I mean? Might have two or three, you know. If you say to me, do you have a geometry book? Yeah, I have one. Do I mean I have one? No, I've got a ton of geometry books in here. Um, sometimes there's more than one. Uh, so as you read the section tonight, a lot 
of the, the questions and answers and theorems and postulates have to do with one of something, but it's different if they say at least one, or if they say at most one, or if they say exactly one. Uh, if they say at least one, what could that mean? One or more. One or more. At least one is like one, two, three, four, a million, a billion, who knows. Uh, at least one is one or anything more than that. What if I said at most one? That's one or, one or less. That's one or less. Uh, it's either one or none. It's like, you know, is there a king of France? Well, there's at most one of those. Because if there is a king of France, he's the only king of France. But France actually doesn't have a king. France has a president at present. Uh, at present. Uh, so at most one means there's one or maybe there's not anything at all. If I said exactly one, that means one. one. So as you read this, don't just absorb the fact they're saying there's one of this and one of that and one of this and one of that. Uh, you need to be readier to be like at least one of this or at most one of that or exactly one of this or something like that. Uh, those introductory phrases are going to matter as you read 3.3. Uh, so if you're reading it and you feel like, boy, there's a lot of ones in this, there are, but there's at least ones and at most ones, there's differences in the, in the meanings of those as well. But 3.3, seven new points, lots of ones, lots of fillings. Compared to today's 8, 9, 10, 11, I keep the exact same, not one change in those. Uh, one and two, I'll keep the exact same with the added detail of I'm going to make you do what tomorrow that I didn't care about today? Spell them. You've got to spell those. So if you're not sure how to spell those, write those down. Uh, these are the two main words of the homework. Collinear, complainer are the two main words of the homework. We'll do a homework preview here with that figure in just a second. Uh, number three, I'm going to keep exactly the same. Four, I'm going to keep exactly the same. 5 through 7 is going to become state me what the postulate says. So the plain space postulate is one of the better ones, I think, that the title gives you a clue of what you should say. Uh, the plain space postulate has one sentence that starts with the word plain, and the other one starts with the word space. space. That's how it got its name. So the title itself gives you a structural cue to get the, the sentences going right. Uh, the sentence says, planes contain at least three non-colinear points. Space contains at least four non-coplanar points. You don't have to say the word different because here is another concept for today. Uh, you could jot this down somewhere below number 11 maybe. If I ever use a number in a sentence, it means that the things have to be different. If I don't use a number in a sentence, it's possible the things might be the same. So if I say to you, P and Q are points, it has a different meaning than if I say to you, P and Q are two points. Uh, if I introduce the number, what did I just say is true? There's, they have to be different. Okay, so if I say P and Q are two points, they have to be different. If I just said P and Q are points, well, maybe they're the same. Okay, so P and Q are two points. This is the only thing it could look like. But if I just say P is a point, so is Q, well, th that might be the, the s different names for the same thing. Uh, if I said to you, David is in my class, Dave is in my class, how many people do I actually have in my class? One. I just have two names I can use for him. But if I said in another year, David and Dave are two students in my class, that means I have two people with the same name and we're differentiating between the two. So there will be one question on that tomorrow. Uh, you might be filling in the blank with different or you might be filling in the blank with same, but I'm not going to tell you which way I phrased the question because day by day I mix that up. So again, the magic is anytime I use a number, they have to be different. different. Anytime I don't use a number, it's possible they're the same. Uh, so backtracking to the plain space postulate, that's why in the plain space postulate, you don't have to write the word different. You could.
but you don't have to write the word different because you've used a number. Uh, likewise, back on the line postulate, you don't have to say two different points because you said two. You've got the different already covered as soon as you use the number. Um, question about what the quiz shows up as. Homework is 55, there's a 1 to 16, it's largely based on collinear, coplanar. So let me take a small step to this direction and ask you some questions from this figure. So can anybody from this picture give me two points that are collinear? J and K. J and K. J and K are connected with a line, so J and K are clearly collinear. Somebody else, can you give me two points on this picture that are collinear? D and G. D and G. Uh, I connected D and G with a line, so those are collinear. <coughs> can anybody give me two other points? I didn't connect them with a line yet, but I could. Two points, they're unconnected at the moment, but I could connect them. They are collinear. A and C. Uh, a and C I already connected. Those are collinear. Something I didn't play connect the dots on them yet. Two points, not connected yet. B and C. Uh, B and C. Yeah, I could draw in a connection from B to C. Those are on the same line. Uh, those are collinear. It's not hard to come up with two points that are collinear, because what did we learn about on the quiz already? Two points, or any two points? There's always one line that connects them. So any set of two would have to be collinear. That's just the way that goes. So if I ask you to pick two that are non-collinear, Work. It doesn't work. That's just a mean question. It can't happen. There are no two points that are non-collinear. That's not a thing. Question about two points playing games with collinear. Okay, let's go three points collinear. Can anybody spot me a set of three collinear? Yep. Uh, B I H. B I H. B I and H are collinear. They're all on a line. I played connection with that straight line. There's a set of three collinear. Can anybody else spot me another set of three collinears? FJK. FJK. Any three of these across the bottom would be collinear because they're on a line. Can anybody spot me three but non-collinear? Um, ABC. ABC. A and B are on a line. We could go forever with that. It's never going to touch C. A and C are on a line. Go forever with it. You'd never touch B. ABC would be an example of three non-collinear points. Uh, the only way you could ever have something touch all three of them would be a, a plank, like a flat top thing. Like those three points could be touched by a plane. Uh, three points can always be touched by a plane. A point is the way that's got to go. That was a box. Can anybody, well, question about the threes trying to go collinear at all? Is, uh... B, D, E would not be collinear. B, D, if this went forever, would never touch E. Uh, like, if we had a box like this, B, D is like here. E is like that back corner. So no line that touches this could ever clip that back corner. Question about three points, collinear. Okay, let's go four points. Can anybody see four points that are collinear? Sure. FJKG. Across the bottom, those four are collinear. Let's go four points non-collinear. Uh, ABCD. Yeah, ABCD. Those four points non-collinear. Could I do five and be collinear? Yeah. No. And then I'll quit talking about collinear. Okay. So two always. Three, four, five, maybe, but it starts to get hard. Like for them to be contained in a line. Two is always collinear. Three, four, five, maybe. See how it goes. Question about collinear, that idea. Coplanar means I can touch it with a flat thing. So, like if I asked you for points that were all on the front of this, I can touch them all. Anything that's on the front would be coplanar because my plane. They were all on the bottom. Yep. What if some were on the bottom and some were on the top? No, because if I touch all of the bottom, I sure can't touch the top anymore. It just it can't be done. So coplanar means my plane can touch them all. 
it's just hard from pictures. It's maybe easier from like a box you can handle to try to grasp that. Uh, but let's look for two points coplanar. Can anybody spot me two points B coplanar? A B. A B. So a plane that would touch the top of the box would touch A and B. So there's for sure two points that would be coplanar. Can anybody spot two points but non coplanar? Yeah. Mm, who'd you say? F and A. F and A. Uh, F and A I could get with a plane that came in and touched like the right side of the box. F and A are both like yeah. over there. So I could I could get F and A. Yeah. F and who? B. F and B. How could I get F and B with a plane? I, I can do it. Yeah, through it. So uh, I didn't draw the plane yet, but if I wanted to clip both of these points with a plane and I were willing to destroy a Kleenex box to do it, uh, I could grab my like scissors and cut through this. This plane could drop through it and clip both of those opposite corners. A plane could get them. I didn't draw it, but I could do it. So that would still be coplanar. Uh, can anybody go find me two points that are non-coplanar? No. no, you can't. Any two points have to be coplanar. It's just the way that that goes. How about three points coplanar? A, B, C. Uh, we can do it. What say? A, B, C. A, B, C. These three on the top, I, I wanted to touch the top of my box. Boom. A, B, C. Those three points are coplanar. Can somebody spot me another group of three other than that customer? Coplanar, group of three? CFE. CFE are all here on the left side. I can get them all with the plane. CFE is coplanar. Can anybody get me a group of three non coplanar? ABF. I uh, disagree with ABF. Okay, so AB would be like here, uh, F would be here. How could I do a plane that gets all three of them? Let me start with AB. Yeah, I've got my plane touching them, and then I could just swivel this like it's like one of those barbecue things that like rotates. You know, if I'm on here, I can just swivel this until I'm cutting through. So A B F, a plane that cuts through, could get all this stuff. A H F. A H F. Okay, so A and H are both on the back. Uh, a, H are here, F is there. Could I do a cut through move and get all of those? Yes, I could. I could slice through there at the right angle. I could get that. There, I can't do it. We could sit here and try all day. Three points are always going to be coplanar. No matter what three points you pick, three points will always be coplanar. Two points was always Collinear, that's why the line postulate always mentions the number two. The plane postulate mentioned the number three. Any three have to be coplanar. Uh, four points. Coplanar, can you do it? Four yeah. points coplanar? Yeah. yeah, for example. ABCD. ABCD. ABCD is all on the top. That is coplanar. My plane is at the top of the box. You can do four points non coplanar. You need to get three that are determining a plane, and then a fourth that's like just an oddball you could never touch. Like ABC, yes. ABC establishes the top, and then like F. Or ABC, <coughs> anything down here. We couldn't ever turn this without losing some contact on the top that we needed. Um, and that's as far as I wanted to go. Okay, so two points, collinear. Frequency, two points, collinear, always. Three points, collinear, sometimes. sometimes. Uh, two points, coplanar, always. always. Three points, coplanar, always. always. Four, sometimes. sometimes. Uh, but as you do the homework, it's a lot of stuff about collinear, coplanar, what's up with that? Question about the concepts of this, yes? Uh, so we're going to do 3 2 homework tonight, which is page 55. And then the read is 3 3. 
Lots of theorems and postulates that have to do with one of this, one of that, one of this, one of that, but it's at least one or at most one or exactly one is the name of the game. Question about any of that? Uh, people that are still finishing tests, you could go ahead and jump to that. If you want anybody to look at page 50, page 50 is what we're looking to attack today is what's new do. Is there anybody that page 50 ran into any trouble you want to talk about? Because we've got some time that we could talk about it. Uh, page 50, basically, some of the questions are laying a foundation for future things in the chapter. Uh, and some of these we may end up kind of like referring back to these in, uh, in future days. Uh, there are some things in this homework that actually did try to lay a foundation for two points being collinear, three points being coplanar. That's what some of these questions were about before you had even read 3.2. There's some things from the 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 reading that they're kind of like, they're hinting at these things already, um, even before they taught them to you. It's a little bit of a preview. So what 